they just turn in circles until they drop dead. Right. Awful way oh, to go. The oh, turn is Merry Christmas, you. everybody. Merry oh, Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> I wouldn't want to be a wildebeest. A oh, freaking reindeer. Freaking yeah. reindeer. Freaking blinking so reindeer. Festive. They're freaking <laughs> blinking Spinner. reindeer all over the place. And it, you just take off your clothes and you threw them in a hole. And, and then they wound up in your chest of drawers or hanging in your closet. That's Except. a Christmas miracle. A cup of coffee with my with mom. my mom. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! Well, I narrated something for National Geographic like 30 years ago. And I'll That's never probably forget. Where it was I saw it. So horrible, Chuck. It's like a, these termites mm -hmm. crawl the up the nostrils of the wildebeest and burrow into their brain. Like just chew their way into their head. And you, you can tell when they get it because they just turn in circles until they drop dead. Right. Awful way oh, to go. The cool. turning Merry Christmas, you. everybody. Merry oh, Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. I wouldn't want to be a wildebeest. It's never a good day to be a wildebeest. I'm no. telling you, if the lions aren't getting you, the tigers are. And if they're not the getting crocodiles, you. The crocodiles. The little hyenas. Up your nose. Up the bugs up your, your nose. Brain. Friends, if you're a wildebeest or if you know one, don't leave the herd. That's the best advice I can give you. Mm. Just don't leave the herd. Every documentary I've ever narrated, and I've narrated a few, that involves the Serengeti or migrations will always feature the great wildebeest migration, and you'll always see a few that wander off. And they become the star of that segment, and it never ends well. Oh, poor old wildebeest. Um, do you guys want to talk about Christmas at all? Oh, sure. I thought I did. I showed you my stocking. <laughs> did you ever give these away as gifts? No, I hung them by the fireplace and put stuff in them for the kids. I mean, mm -hmm. Santa did. <laughs> Santa did. <laughs> I love the stockings. I always used to save the stockings for last. Mm. I know. No. What's your first uh, Christmas memory, Mike? My first Christmas? Mm. The one I remember most, Mom, was the one where we went back into the woods to get the Christmas tree. Mm that looked like not really a Christmas tree. It just was a tree we cut down. Um, and it was, it was enormous. And we jammed it into the, uh, into the corner of the living room. It was so big, the top bent over. Like, you know, it just was... But going back into the woods with the tractor and the cart and the saws and the axes and, and cutting this tree down and dragging it back and setting it up and then decorating it, you know, and then we it had was the, the anticipation yeah. of Christmas. That's what it was all about. And then you came home and we had hot chocolate and I had written a play. And I still yeah. have that here somewhere on little, little cassette. It was like and reel you guys, to reel. It was on a reel to reel player that dad brought home from the AV department. And you all at school and you all acted out the play. Yeah. I'll yeah. have to look that up. See if I still have that. And. And, you know, it's funny the way your mind works, but, like, I can still smell that tree. I still remember recording that play. But I also remember the Christmas carols that were playing. We had a TV, uh, not TV, a radio that was sort of built into the wall, oh, as I right? It was and, an intercom, basically. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But wasn't it also a radio? Couldn't, I feel like... You could go I over to remember that thing. It, I don't remember it being a radio, just an intercom. But, you know, I mean, it could pick up a radio sound from another room and broadcast it That's to the That's what it was. Right. So there's like a transistor radio in the kitchen, and it's playing Christmas carols, and the intercom is open. So, so the sound is coming oh, okay. in through the intercom. No dinner reservations. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. We're, we're eating in. Yeah. Dad's got a question. Stand by. Really it's good? okay. All right. Well, he's off to play pool. He's going to shoot okay. some pool with friends. Nothing says Christmas like going to the pool hall. <laughs> and, uh, oh, but Michael. Picking up a few bucks from some This sucker. place is decorated. Oh, oh, oh. This place is decorated beautifully. So to go down to the lobby, the trees are exquisite. You, would, you wouldn't believe it. it. It looks like a. it was professional and they were all professionally done. The trees the all over the place, carpet. blinking reindeer outside. It just, it's really nice. Anyway, What'd yeah. What you say? What Dad kind of reindeer? Blinking. They have lights all over them and they, they're oh. blinking off and off. I thought you said freaking. 
A freaking reindeer. <laughs> freaking yeah. reindeer Freaking outside. blinking so reindeer. Festives. The freaking <laughs> blinking Spin reindeer around. all over the place. They've all got vertigo from that carpet. From the carpets making all of them. They got, you know what they got, Chuck? The reindeer, they got the turning sickness. Mm. It's a shame what's happened at the home. All the reindeer are blinking and turning in circles on account of a carpet that seems to be instilling vertigo in all creatures, great and small. <laughs> what's your oldest Christmas memory? Your first Christmas memory when you think about being a kid? Well, my father was in charge of getting the tree and setting it up in the living room. And my mother, who was, as I've said, a little bit on the um, domineering side, she like made all the rules and she, Mm -hmm. yeah. Why bother being circumspect now? You've written a book about your mother (laughs) where you spell out this neuroses in a dozen or two chapters. I mean, yes, a little controlling. A little bit, a little bit. So dad would put up the tree and anchor it to the wall and it was beautiful and he had, and we had a Christmas garden, but my mother was in charge of decorating it. And I'm telling you, she had a place for each one of those balls (laughs) and we finished it off with icicles and God forbid anybody should put on two at a time. They were placed one at a time carefully over the branch and another one. I mean, there could be like 5,000 icicles in this package and one at a time. And she could tell if there were two. And I mean, heaven, heaven help you if you took a handful and threw them on. Mm. (sighs) These are like very thin strips of silver. Oh, yeah. Whatever. That's what you're talking about. They were called icicles. Yeah. Yeah. I love those. I think I I feel like they've fallen out of out of favor. favor. Yeah, I haven't seen one on a Christmas tree in years. I tell you what they have here on the one down in this lobby is they have I guess cotton, raw cotton stuffed. I mean it's decorated beautifully, and then they've stuck like raw cotton here and there and every. It's beautiful. It looks like snow. Mm. How interesting that that icicle thing is so evocative. Because I remember hanging icicles on the tree that I just described. We always had icicles on we our did. tree. We did. And and one of the things, and this is, for a long time, this felt to me like a row family secret. Not the icicles, but the discovery of A Christmas Story by Gene Shepard. And there's the, the tree in that story, in that thing that TBS now airs 24-7 on Christmas, that thing was covered in icicles that looked like they'd been thrown on in clumps. And right. the minute I saw that, that it, it, it's just funny what, what brings the memories yeah. back. And do you remember, my, this would have been like 1984, I came home and I said, I have, I've seen a movie and you're going to love it and we have to find it somehow. And it was a Christmas story. And we used to watch it. It felt like, you know, for five or six years before any... I. It was years before I ever talked to anybody who had seen that movie. And now I don't know anybody who hasn't seen it. God knows how many times. <laughs> it's a classic for sure. We enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it's not just the lines and the characters. I think people of a certain age can really identify with it because some, well, maybe not the furnace in the basement and the smoke coming through the house, but going to see Santa Claus and getting the tree and the, Oh, yeah. You know, you can identify with the action. I guarantee you, 99% of the people listening to this, assuming anyone is, are nodding their heads and thinking about that movie. And what's so weird, Mom, is that I guess you know you're getting old when a thing that you felt like you discovered that no one else had seen has now become a classic. It's funny how that happens. Yeah, it is. Did you guys have a lot of Christmas traditions? I think music is such, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, Mom, but that's, you know, there was always music playing in the house. And as soon as we got anywhere near December, and it wasn't Christmas carols necessarily. We weren't, Mm. it wasn't about all that. My mom would play, you know, Faré's Requiem and and the big, meaty, classical pieces and the, uh, like the Westminster Not on the piano, on the record No. (laughs) <laughs> no, but on that on that crappy little transmitter, that 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 little transistor 
through our <laughs> <laughs> through our weird little that house. I forgot all about that intercom system, but it was weird. It was like we had a laundry chute, which was also mm. weird and mysterious, you know, for a kid. It it's was. Like, yeah, you just throw your dirty stuff into this hole in the wall, and it came back clean <laughs> a couple of well, days later. Well, it doesn't later, come right? up to shoot clean. <laughs> And you know what, Mike? That was years ago that we had the laundry chute. And Dad will still get ready for a shower, and he'll take something off. And he said, oh, I've worn this twice. I better shoot it. That means put it in the laundry chute. Of course, we have no laundry chute. It means put it in the washing machine. (laughs) You know, that is something. I'm I'm, I'm going to write about that one of these days because that is just such a great metaphor, like for the disconnect of a kid who doesn't really understand or appreciate how his laundry is getting done. Right. This is, I mean, I was up on the, the, the top floor when I was a kid, Chuck, you know, and, and right next to the bed, there was this little tiny bathroom in my room, at least for a time it was my room. And then, uh, and then this laundry chute between the bed and the, and the bathroom. So, and you just take off your clothes and you threw them in a hole. And, and then they just... wound up in your chest of drawers or hanging in your closet a few yep. days later. <laughs> yep. It was it, magic. It, it really was. It, that, that's Except, a Christmas miracle. Very Except that 